So we're going to use a clocker object, and every time you send it a bang, it starts counting um, from zero in whatever increment you've given it. Um, so this is a thousand milliseconds or one second. You can tell the pacing is about one second. And every time you send it a bang, it starts from zero, and then you can um, turn it off by way by sending it a zero, um, which is what the toggle sends out when um, it is toggled off. Um, so, but how can this control our um, our bang to the timing of our bang to our random object? Well, we can use it in conjunction with a select object, and um, what we're going to do is we'll get a bang. Um, when we reach five seconds. We'll just do it this way. Okay, so I'll turn on the clocker object. Watch over here. Okay, so we got a bang. Um, the sound is off, which is why we didn't hear anything. Um, but now we can reset it. Okay, so and that's great and all, however, um, we need to be able to reset the clocker so that it works every five seconds rather than simply um, after the first five seconds. So I'm going to try something that can run us into issues, um, which is by essentially creating an infinite loop. The question is whether the infinite loop is slow enough that it won't cause a problem. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So wonderful. So now every five seconds we're setting we're getting a new random value, which is lovely, but what if we don't want it to be quite so predictable? Well, in that case, we can use another random num um, object. This time, um, we'll use, let's say, 20. So our range is from 0 to 19. We'll seed it uh, with the number 45. And, of course, what we want to do is not to actually send the number 20, we want to send, or, sorry, numbers 1 through 19, we want to send 1 through 19 seconds. So we want to basically change our select object. So rather than this 5 seconds, um, we can have any value between 1 and 19 seconds. So, um, and then... Of course, we want to um, get a new number after we have reached the previous number. So let's see how this works. Okay, okay. now turn it on and go. Oh, and I'll also put an integer box so we can see what's going on.
Um, so clearly it's nothing to write home about um, yet. Um, and there are some tweaks with the timing that we might want to do. Um, but we've gotten started. Um, so one thing we might want to do again, when we start the patch with this toggle here, we probably want Excuse me, we probably want a sound to start pretty much right off the bat. Um, so obviously we could change the select object so that it um, selects you know, 1000 so that it waits one second. But we can also use a gate um, object. The gate object um, basically routes um, input to a particular output based on the value that comes in here. So, you know, if this value gets a three, um, if this inlet gets a three, then whatever value comes in here will be sent out the third um, outlet. Um, we actually only need um, one outlet for what we're going to do. What we're going to do is to use a toggle and a gate um, to um, to a toggle to both close and open the gate and to send a particular input um, through the gate. So in order to do that, we're going to use the trigger message. And um, we need to, um, actually, we need to begin by opening the gate and then just sending our bang message. So basically what this does is when we click the X, it sends a one, and then we'll click it again and we'll send a zero. One opens the gate, zero closes the gate. Um, so we click this, we send a one to open the gate, then we send a bang through the gate. When we click it again, it will send a zero closing the gate, and so the bang that's sent will not make it through. So you can see, when I click it off, there's no bang. When I click it on, there's a bang. So all we're going to do is to place this <clears throat> over here. And then this way, we get the um, bang that we want when we first start the patch. So. Now we have turned on the start window and we should theoretically have some sound going to wait to get the next sound until 17 seconds in. Now to five seconds. 14 seconds. Now, we'll stop this. In subsequent videos, we'll look at ways to optimize the patch so that we can use, um, so we have a little bit more control over the randomness and stru can structure our soundscape um, a bit more to our liking.